everyone in this tutorial I'm going to show you how I made this vintage NBA t-shirt design in Photoshop. I'm going to be walking through how I used my retro tone vintage action pack to make these vintage image effects in just a few clicks and I'll also be going through how I did all the vintage text effects and the vintage grunge effect on top. To get started we just want to make a new Photoshop document. Let's make that 15 inches wide by 20 inches tall, 300 ppi, with the RGB color mode and a black background. First we just want to add in our main image. Let's drag and drop this image of Rodman, which will be the main focal point of the design. We want to remove the background and we can do this easily by using our toolbar and clicking remove background which does a pretty good job of isolating the subject. If you notice that some of the image is missing, you can go down to your layers panel and then click your layer mask thumbnail, then click the paintbrush tool, make sure white is selected, and then you can start painting back in the missing parts of your image. And if too much is showing, too much of the background you can change this color to black and then you can start painting out different parts and that looks good enough so in order to add your vintage image effects we're going to be using my retro tone vintage action pack that's available in the link in the description and to use this, you can go to your window and then open the Actions panel. Then you want to go to this hamburger menu on the top right of the panel. Click Load Actions and then you can select that .atn file that you downloaded. Then all of the retro tone effects should appear in the panel, like so. There's 25 vintage presets included that include both full color and monochromatic effects. And this will automatically add the vintage texture and color to your image. And for this design, we use this preset called Vintage Magazine Halftone Full Color. And to use it, you just need to select the preset, select your image layer, then hit the play button. And then as you can see, most of the work is done for us. There's a subtle vintage halftone effect added and the colors are changed to a more vintage color palette. So even though this looks good right off the bat, we can make it look even better by adding a few adjustments to it. So let's right click that layer and convert that to a smart object. Then we wanna to go to image, adjustments, and then we can add a levels adjustment I think it looks a little bit too dark, so I would like to grab this mid-tone slider and just brighten up the mid-tones just a tad, and then click OK. Then if we want to make the colors look even more vintage, we can add a hue and saturation adjustment, and then turn down the saturation just a little bit, maybe to around negative 20. And that will make the colors look a little bit more faded to give it that nice vintage look. Click OK. And that's pretty much it for the, for the image effects. Uh, we just want to add in our secondary image, which is a profile of Rodman. Drop that. Actually, before we do that, we can click our main image and shift click both of those layers and then click this button here to add them to a group. And we just want to do this to keep our layer panel clean. And we can just call this group Rodman Main. Then we can go back to that secondary image and we can follow the same steps and remove this background. Then we want to add in our retro tone effects which will use the same vintage magazine halftone. Just click play. 
then right click let's turn that into a smart object and then add in those same adjustments layers so let's make the midtones a little bit brighter and then we can add in a hue and adjustment or hue and saturation layer and that will make the colors a little bit more subtle then we just want to feather the edges a little bit of this image so we can just use our eraser tool and then we just want to make it a soft brush and we can click to rasterize let's make that a little bit bigger and then you can just shift click and drag and that should feather the edges just a little bit just to make the look a little bit nicer then you can go to the layers panel and then shift click both of those layers and add that to a group we'll call that rodman profile and then let's click and drag that group below our main image and then now we can do a little bit of moving around just to have things placed properly so let's hit command or control t and that will allow us to click and drag those groups easier so i'm gonna move this to the side then i will move that profile kind of just like right below in this little gap to fill in that area Then next, we can add in what we used for our background image, which is this image of Rodman dunking. And what I did for this image was just add a monochromatic grunge effect to it. And this is pretty easy. We just need to reset our foreground and background color so it's black and white. Then we can go to filter and then filter gallery. And then let's reset these here. And then the first effect that we want to add is in the sketch folder and it's called reticulation. And then for now, let's zoom out a little bit. For now, let's try to, let's keep these settings the same. Let's have density at 12, foreground at 40, and then the background at five, then we can add a new layer to it that will add another reticulation layer and make it a little bit more grainy then the third effect we want to add a torn edges effect and that will give that this kind of final real grain and grunge layer to it and then we can you can adjust those as needed but these settings look good to me and that's the image balance at 25 the smoothness at 11 and the contrast at 17 and we can click OK. And then next, we just want to feather the edges a bit. And you can do this by right clicking the layer and then rasterizing it. Then you can use that same technique with the eraser tool and just erase around the edges. We'll use a soft brush and that should fade the edges a little bit more so it looks a little bit cleaner we don't want the edges to look too sharp you can sh just remember to hold shift and you can drag to make sure it's straight actually i'm going to redo that i'm going to make the brush a little bit bigger and the hardness at zero just to make the fade a little bit more prominent Oops. and that looks good enough for me so we just want to grab that layer and then drag that to the bottom beneath our main image and the secondary image then we can let's move this around a little bit and let's nudge that and then we can align the secondary image 
to this bottom corner of the background. Then what I did to the background image was turn the opacity down so it's a little bit more subtle. We can make that 25%. Then you can even do that to your secondary image here as well. So we can have the main image stand out a little bit more and we can just like turn the opacity of that whole group down maybe around to 70%. Then next we can add in our Bulls logo, which I kind of just tucked it beneath his chin here just to fill in some awkward space. And then what I like to do is add in a hue and saturation adjustment and then turn down the saturation of this logo just a little bit maybe around negative 30. And that will just make the colors look a little bit more faded and vintage. Then if you want to have that logo stand out from the background a little bit more, we can double click that layer and then add a drop shadow. Let's make that black. Let's keep the distance around 21 pixels, but let's turn down the spread to zero and then turn up the size. And that should give a subtle black effect just to make that a little bit, make that stand out a little bit from the background. And you click OK. Next, we want to add in our text. And for the main Rodman text, I used the font Akin Pro, which is a free font on Adobe Fonts. So everybody should have access to it if they have an Adobe subscription. And then let's just type in Rodman. I'm going to have the tracking here negative 25 so the letters are a little bit closer together. We can just click and drag to scale that up. For the text effect, you can double click that text layer to bring up your layer styles panel. Then we want to add a color overlay and we want to make that that same red as the Chicago Bulls logo. You could do this by clicking your color and then just using the eyedropper to get that red, which it already is red. Next, you want to add in a drop shadow. Um, we're going to make that black. You want the angle to be around 136 degrees the distance around 21 pixels, but we want the spread to be 100%, and that will make it so the edges aren't fuzzy. Then you can turn down the size to maybe around 10 pixels. Then we want to add another drop shadow. We can just duplicate this one, but instead make that color white. Then you can increase the size so it peaks out from edges and you can even increase the distance a little bit. Do something like that. We can play around with the distance, I guess, to get the proper... We can turn that black one down a little bit so it's a little bit smaller and then turn this one down so it's a little bit more subtle. But yeah, that's the gist of the effect. It's pretty simple. You just add a couple of drop shadows to it to add like a little bit of an outline and you can click OK. Then let's use the move tool. And then if you go down to the bottom corner and then you hold shift and then you can rotate that exactly 90 degrees. You can scale that and place that as you'd like. I'm going to drag this and put this below our main and secondary image. And let's do a little bit shuffling around just to keep make sure things are spaced properly. So I'm going to move this group a little bit over to the side. Then if we want to separate this main image from the 
text, you can click that main image group or double click it. And then you can even add a drop shadow there. And we can just turn the spread down and then turn the size up. And that will just add a slightly fuzzy shadow to it just to separate it from the text a little bit. And then we can click OK. And then for the script text that we had at the top, I used the font Mistral, which is another Adobe font. So if you have your subscription, this should be available to you. And then you can just type in Dennis and then scale that up a bit. Then we want to have a similar effect as the Rodman text. And we could do this by clicking the Rodman text right clicking that layer click copy layer style then go back to your script text and then right click it and then paste it layer style so that will automatically add the same effects to it then you can just double click it and we can go in and adjust those effects and just customize it a little bit more so instead of having the main color red, I wanted it to be almost like a cream color or off-white color, just to give it a vintage look. So let's make this kind of like an, a light off-white cream. And click OK. Then for the drop shadow, instead of having a white outline, I wanted to make that that same Chicago Bulls red color. So we can click that color and then use the eyedropper tool and then hit the red. And that is the effect for this one. Next for the bottom text, let's add in our text down here. We can say five times NBA champion, scale that up. Let's make that font Euro style. Bold oblique. And then let's scale it down a little bit more. Then we can add that same text effect as we use for the script. So we can just click that layer, copy layer style, and then click our bottom text and then just paste that same layer style. And that's pretty much the whole design. It's pretty simple. But if we want to take this a little bit further and add in a vintage texture to it, you can shift and click all the layers except for the black background layer and then add that to a group. Then you can go to your image texture and open that up in Photoshop. I'm using my vintage t-shirt texture pack available in the link in the description. Then you can just hit command A to select everything and then command C to copy and go back to your design document, select your group, add in a layer mask. Then you can option or alt click that layer mask thumbnail to edit, then command paste your texture to it. Make sure you scale that up to the size that you want it. And then just click enter. And then that automatically adds that texture to your graphic. And you can test this by hiding your background layer, the black layer. And you can see that the texture is affecting the opacity of your graphic. So it's not just a black layer on top, it's actually affecting the transparency. And that's all there is to it. That's the whole design. This whole process was made pretty simple using my Retro Tone Vintage Action Pack. If you learned something from this video, I'd appreciate it if you'd like and subscribe and check out all the other custom design tools in my shop. I have hundreds of effects and assets that help speed up your workflow. There's also a bunch of free effects that you can download and use in your designs. So feel free to check them out. I'll see you in the next one and thanks for watching.